Um, I had, as you can see, had it a lot of time for public comment. That is not necessary anymore. Hi, everybody. Hi, folks. Hi. Uh, we're just starting with uh, approving the minutes. So if you want to grab yours and um, read them. We were concerned that that door was locked. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if there's other people that might be coming. Somebody was going out and they were coming in. That door should be left open. The I know. back door is always open. It was locked when we came, and only because there were people inside, they let us in. Yeah, me too. So they just, just I got in. You got in just, just then. Just like so in between, oh. we, we left a little, um, we we put a little thing in the door. Piece of wood in there. We shouldn't just leave it in there for a little time. No. Energy homage. Yeah. <laughs> Energy homage. Yeah. <laughs> well, we thought people might come for this. Yeah, I had thought myself, but as you can see, yeah. that doesn't seem to be a concern. All right, I'll go. Why was it? Why were we holding up a lot of time for public comment? Um, because we had a lot of term, the planning board slash, um, oh, what was it, the legislative committee with the... Uh, legislative body of affairs. Yeah. yeah. Had a big turnout to the discussion about solar arrays, and they had heard me get up and speak. I see. And so, um, they... There was reason to believe that people would want to further that public comment. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, so we'll just. Are you aware she's not public? No, I'm very not public. So, <laughs> okay, private. I, I am. That's why I'm here on, on camera. Yes. <laughs> We have about 25 minutes for in case you know, oh. a large public question. Okay. Yeah, I thought there might have been. So, Jed, you've got you've got the you you you've got the um, you know 25 minutes to have your pick and make your. Oh jeez. Hmm. What are you talking about? Your turn. All right. So we're reading the um, minutes from the last meeting and. Uh,
Have you suggested changes to any of it? to our March 20th Tree Commission meeting. That's the first one. And then the other is that, um, uh, so I've been continuing my conversation with gentleman Bob Ackley, and I sent you all a link to a little video he did. Oh, that was amazing. Wasn't that really, yeah. really, it just brought it right home. That was cool. That was really I thought cool. it was so important to get out there. So I'm really taking it upon myself to help um, amplify this man's good research and work. And um, to that point, I have invited him, Marty Nathan and I, Marty is another climate activist, and she is part of the neighborhood on Massasoit Street that um, brought the whole issue of gas leaks to Northampton when uh, they learned about this heat MA um, mapping of the gas leaks, looked on their street and said, Jesus, there's 20 police on our street. And, um, and then just, you know, went, went to the press about it um, and extracted a promise from Columbia Gas to fix all the news. So anyway, um, I really wanted to partner with Marty on inviting Bob Ackley to come and, to, and to, give, to teach us a little bit and also for us to have an opportunity to look at how well Columbia Gas has in fact plugged some of these leaks. So he is coming on Monday, March 4th at, I want to see, 6.30 p.m., I think it is. Um, if, uh, I know that you two can't come. I, I, uh, I reached out immediately to Marilyn and Molly, being that they are active in, in the climate work that I do, and neither of them can attend. I know Molly has something. Yes, so um, I don't know if anyone else can attend. Uh, we can't have four of us be in the meeting at the same time, unless, unless we call it a public meeting and are prepared to, like, set an agenda and create minutes and everything. <laughs> well, um, was it his, his, it's like a workshop? Or? It's, you know, it's, I would call it a, a, a conversation. Um, I'm inviting, and um, I've, I've gotten RSVPs from Alan Snow, who is the um, tree warden over at Amherst. Rich is coming, I know for sure. I have invited Alex Sherman, who is the tree warden in Springfield, and the reason I invited Springfield so specifically is they have one of the worst um, counts of, of gas leaks in the whole state. They're well over 500, and per capita, that's a lot. And um, the other reason is, well, three reasons really. One is they just planted a whole bunch of new trees because of the recent tornado. And you know, if they're planting them where there are active gas leaks, that's just going to set those trees up to die. Um, and then the third reason is because they share the same suppliers as Columbia Gas, and Columbia Gas made a public statement two years ago affirming that they would be plugging the leaks in Springfield and North Hampton. So, um, uh, for all those reasons, I would, would have loved him to come. He, he declined, um, and uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can get, continue to share the information with him, and also free advocates in, in Springfield. So, you know, our event open public. I'm going to keep it small enough yeah. that um, you know we can all fit into someone's living room. So, but but if you have a couple of people who you can think of who you think would take a particular interest in this. I could offer to my neighbors some of them are in, might be interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, especially Stoddard. Stoddard, because there's a video. Yeah, yeah. Online. She did. Street. Oh, yeah. We're I shared it with, with the whole street. We, and they all got back. We need a new place. Were you there for any of that? Or? Mm. 
the gas line repair and Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are things better then? Fun stuff? Well, there was one neighbor who's moved away. Alicia used to yeah. go out and smell around all the time and call the gas company really regularly. She had little kids. But I mean, did they come but, and do a major repair? Yeah, the whole road has been. There's, there's rectangles all down the street. Uh, yeah. So they repaired all the leaks that I'm aware of. Okay. So they I, dug the road multiple times. Just thinking about the sweet, the black ones. So, you know. Well, and also Bob's comment was, you, you know, it's been repaired so many times since the new line. Um, you know, because it sounds like they're dealing with a faulty line. So I don't know, maybe maybe he, they ended up putting so many new parts in that it, it constitutes a new line. I don't know. Mm. Several of my neighbors wanted to know, you know, what they could do, and I said to ask around and find out who organized. Um, to get Massasoit so you, and get involved. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Squeaky wheel. That's exactly. Yeah. So, a anyway, um, if Sue, are you interested in coming? Possibly. Yeah. I have to check okay. um, something. Jenna Ross? Yeah, I just, I have to check a few things. I can um, get back to you a little bit. Okay. I'm well, definitely I'm interested. Come, but I, I like the links. Okay, I'll keep sharing. I'll keep it's, sharing. Si it's at 6? Six? 6.30. Yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a really interesting guy. Interesting guy. He's great interest. He's working, well, I'm working with him to create a PowerPoint and a, and a, uh, a guideline, a set of guidelines for tree wardens um, throughout the state. Uh, and so, you know, we're just, he's, he's just a wealth of knowledge. All right, so those are my two chair reports. Really, just for clarification, that means on the fourth. Monday, the fourth. 24 Massasoit Street? 24 Massasoit Street. Okay. Yeah. And who is the owner of the household? Marty Nathan. Marty Nathan. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't ask you. Is there something you're interested in coming to? I don't think I can make it, but. Okay. Um, hey, Rich, that does remind me. I mean, it, it, it's not a meeting, but it's just something that we are, that we, we're all coming together as an educational thing. As long as we post it, it's not like we have to take minutes or write an agenda if it's not a, it's not a city meeting, is it? Do we just need to post if it? If it's a quorum, if it's an anticipated quorum, we need to post it. Yes, post it. But we don't, does that mean? Technically, you're supposed to have minutes. Okay, all right. Well, if it comes to that, we'll deal with it. I mean, if there's really more that I would, I don't want to turn anyone away. So it would be different, like for example, at the tree uh, community tree conference, that has nothing to do with anything in the business of the tree commission. So uh -huh. multiple commissioners to go to that, okay. but because this is something that's an agenda item that's being discussed amongst all of you during a regular meeting forum, it would probably be best to do that if that if you anticipate that. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it for me. My turn. Okay, I seem to have other What about yeah, chairs and yeah, tenants and public right Oh yeah. You know what? I, I'm just gonna bump that down the road to discussion of the discussion of the revised ordinance. Yeah. I can I can give you all of that yeah. uh, a couple things. Uh, I sent you an email with an attachment to the photo of the five hundred dollar fine that I just collected today from the, the legal tree removal on Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. So we have <coughs> Five hundred dollars in our possession. So the tree warden, the tree warden account at the moment has eighty-five hundred dollars in it. So just uh, to let you know, where um, is where is one fifteen Bridge Street? It is right across from Lamprey Park, where the crosswalk is. Mm -hmm. So that oh. little tree belt right there was a very healthy kinkle tree that was there. cut down mm -hmm. illegally, uh, illegally. By by the homeowner? No, the house is abandoned. Uh, it's uh, being uh, managed by Aspen Realty Group down in Connecticut. So they sent a landscaper from Connecticut to do a bunch of trimming on the on their property from the brush and limbs that were overhanging the fence into the sidewalk. Yeah. So they decided to prune the trees that were in the Is 115 the mansion? Yes. Really? That's yeah. abandoned? Yeah, there's no one living in there. It's, I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Yeah, they, 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 it was foreclosed. Thank you. Okay. 
So for sale. I used to know that. Tom? Yeah. So, so the other thing I wanted to, to say is that I was doing a little uh, research. Uh, at, the, at the water department, they have city reports that go back all the way to 1882. So they, every department in the city used to get a copy of the city report. So I was looking for some information actually about Spring Grove Cemetery in relation to allocation of funds for the purchase of the, the land. And what I found in there, though, was a whole bunch of interesting things about public shade trees. So I'll read you a little blurb here. This is from the uh, late 1880s. And this was uh, the report, this was the portion of the report called the Report of the City Improvement Committee, which is now uh, the Capital Improvements Committee. So, um, so shade trees. Uh, there, are, uh, there are a great many uh, large trees in different parts of the city, uh, which uh, for many years have been neglected and are now rapidly going to decay. So this is 1880 now, 1880 we're talking about. These should be either cut down or thoroughly trimmed. Their dead limbs are liable to be broken off by high winds or to fall by, by their own weight upon persons who may be passing under them. As the city is responsible for all the personnel damage resulting from this source and barely escaping becoming liable for a large amount of this year, for a large amount of this year, it would be it would be well that there should be a special appropriation for this purpose. That's interesting. The next thing is much much more interesting and actually plays into exactly what we're trying to do today. It's called uh, uh, setting of setting out trees. In the matter of setting out uh, new trees, we would recommend that instead of planting elm and maple trees almost exclusively, a greater variety of trees should be used, especially in the new streets that are rapidly being opened. These new trees, with their many uh, shades of foliage, will in a few years add greatly to the appearance of our city streets, both in summer and autumn. Several hundred varieties of shade trees adorn um, the city of Washington and are uh, and a nursery for their cultivation is maintained by the city. End of paragraph. Mm -hmm. So, back in the late 1800s, they were obviously thinking about diversity in the city just as we are today. Oh. And apparently, some people listened and some people didn't. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, they didn't listen. They didn't really listen. Uh, they, they didn't listen uh, too well. But there's another little blurb in here that I actually sent to Lily, which I found really um, interesting. Trees killed by gas. Oh. So, so this is from the 1880s as well. Remember this town, you know, operated on coal gasification. Correct. Oh. So the, uh, this is from the same uh, uh, improvement committee. It says, trees killed by gas. Unfortunately, we have lost several trees by the leaking of gas from the street mains. <laughs> um, to prevent which, we must look uh, to the Northampton Gaslight Company who are responsible for this loss, unless some other department disturbs their mains by excavating the ground under the mains, which has, some, uh, which has sometimes been done. Mm -hmm. The leakage of gas uh, is a deadly cause of tree destruction, and we hope that the gas company and all other street departments will adopt every possible means that, that uh, can be had to protect the city's trees from destruction. The leakage of a very small amount of gas is sufficient to destroy a large, strong tree. Hmm. End of paragraph. Wow. Very interesting. So it, it's interesting. That's amazing. Here, here we are. Killer. Yeah. I mean, it's a silent killer. Yeah. I tell you, I feel like this is this wow. is just a huge thing that has been overlooked. I I haven't. I don't remember the state mentioning it once. I mean, I've been working with the state for five years on on urban tree stuff, and I just I don't hear it. Hmm. So there was, you know, there was a lot of a thought that went into these reports, and they're from every city department. But I found it to be very interesting. Um, and then, of course, as you get close, I, I did a bunch of research from Northampton was a town in the early 1800s, and then it became a city. And then the mayor actually, with the city, or the aldermen, because they were aldermen at the time, <clears throat> they're the ones that actually wrote these reports in the water department. Um, got a copy of them, and it talks about every facet of the city government. And these reports were done until the early 1970s, when they kind of petered out. Uh, they changed, and so basically, these reports were used for. Um, it would also talk about all the expenditures, cap, you know, all expenditures, including personal services, OM of every department, 
So it's really interesting, historically speaking, to actually see these things. So I just thought I'd share them with you. Yeah, history repeats itself. It, actually, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, especially in towns. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing I wanted to mention is I did send an email out to folks about the community tree conference. I have a couple of commissioners going. Lily, Rob, is anyone else interested in going into that? My only situation, I would love to go to it, but it's on a Tuesday, which is usually a work day okay. out in the woods for me. Okay. If it's raining or snowing or speeding, then I can't work, and I would love to go to the conference, but I won't know ahead of time. Okay. That's what I'm marching Yeah, it's the day, uh, day yeah, after the day, day after our meeting on Massachusetts. I'd love to go back and get out of here. Rich, I'm reaching out directly to the conference folks, and they're letting Madeline go free. They are? Um, yep. Wait, are they, the meeting on Massachusetts Street is the, the is night fourth. before. Is the fourth. Is the fourth at 6 p.m. The fifth is the tree conference. This is the community yeah. tree conference. Yeah. The, the topics will be really good. They do. I know. They do. Yeah, oh, in, in UMass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, I, uh, Barbara Day thing, we can talk about that at the appropriate time. That's it. Would I be able to go at the last minute, or you have to register ahead of time? For me to register here, this way I have to make a purchase order. So uh, I'd have to actually put you on the list now. Right. Um, so that doesn't mean that the day before I might not be able to add you. I don't. I don't know. So you can just yeah. All right. Because once you're added and you don't show, they have to pay the bill. Right. Unfortunately. So I'll put a note on Monday to contact you. Okay. If the weather looks like it's All right. All right. Should I move on to the next thing? Okay. So as you know, I was surprised on uh, Friday. The I don't know what it was. Seventeenth or something. Eighteenth. Um, when uh, Rich forwarded to me uh, a significantly revised draft of the ordinance the planning office has been working on related to large scale ground mounted solar, um, that was so dramatically different than what we had endorsed, and that the hearing on it was the following Monday, that I felt the need to, you know, s step into overdrive a little bit. And um, you know, to, to consult with Todd and, and Rich, and then take take some immediate action, even though we were outside of uh, committee. Um, and uh, so I felt that it was completely reasonable for me to um, show up at the hearing and um, just submit that the draft that they were considering was substantively different enough from what we endorsed. That we, I could not say that we endorsed what they were considering. Um, and uh, and I was not alone there in my concern. There were a lot of members of the public um, who also spoke about it. And so Carolyn, um, so this was a surprise to the planning office as well. They were not expecting Alan's uh, determination to be so um, strong uh, and to shift the direction of this ordinance in such a dramatic way. Um, nevertheless, they were going forward with a draft that basically removed the whole special permitting part of it. And because Alan felt that um, that it's outside of the legal right of the city to require a special permit for a certain number of trees being removed, and that is all based on um, that is all based on language of a zoning act that was passed in 1985 that is very outdated. And that zoning act was meant to um, protect the installation of solar panels on rooftops because that's all the, that's this practically the only place where people were putting solar panels at the time, and the, um, you know they wanted to protect uh, pe people like homeowners and homeowners associations from being denied the ability to put solar panels up. So they they created this law. Um, or a section of uh, a, a zoning law, chapter 40 of NPL. And it says, um, no zoning ordinance, ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy, except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare. So, um, because uh, I, whereas municipalities around the states have created special permit 
for permitting process mm -hmm. for the installation of large scale solar arrays. Um, Allen did not want to see the city of Northampton be the first test case and lose in a court of law. So he, he wanted to have the preponderance of, you know, uh, um, caution be applied to the drafting of this ordinance. But in so doing, he kind of stripped it of all of it, all its teeth, in my opinion, and in the opinion of other people. So um, what, I, what I suggested was that we take more time, we kind of, you know, slow, slow down, take more time to zoom way back out and consider what all of our options are if, if the, if the um, you know, decisive language here is unreasonably regulate and accept where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare, and those things can be somehow quantified, then maybe our job is to try to add some <coughs> measurables to what it means to remove trees um, in exchange for solar panels. So I, I feel like there's a lot of research for us to do. Um, I, it's not necessarily only on us. The planning office is um, very happy to play their part, but I certainly would love to offer at least myself and any other number of people in the commission who want to take part in this in it being a, a collaborative effort to um, to look at how we want to restructure this whole ordinance um, to best protect forested areas. Um, in hindsight, I'm actually relieved that even our original draft of the endorsed didn't go through because I just did a little Googling about what five acres of forest versus 25,000 um, board feet mean. And generally, you can have 25,000 board feet on one acre of land. So the idea that we were elevating it to five acres mm -hmm. was like, I, we all felt rushed. Like, I'm not blaming anybody, but because, you know, Carolyn wanted to move this thing mm -hmm. forward, but it just, it just reminds me that, you know, there's due diligence, let's, let's you know, do the research that needs to be done. Let's talk to other communities around the Commonwealth um, to see how they feel like they're justifying a, a special permit process. And, um, and then offer some, uh, offer some better language. One thing that I, I also will say is Todd and, and I visited Carolyn's office last week because we knew that she was going to be away this week. Um, otherwise, I would have been happy to invite her to the meeting. And um, uh, when we did, her and I also ran into the mayor in the hallway and I spoke to him. So I feel like they all are giving us our blessing to, you know, request that this process be slowed down. They have no problem with that. Um, and then also what they request, Carolyn does in the short term, is that they create language to just simply close that loophole. Do you remember there was a whole lack of a look back period of the existing um, ordinance that allowed Willard to cut down uh, over 100,000 board feet of wood with impunity. And so um, this, that she's requesting that they move forward with closing out the poll in the short term. How would they do that? Well, um, they would just add, you know, a sentence to the existing, so if you remember, there's an existing 2011 um, regulation that says no, um, no solar arrays will be permitted that exceed 25,000, exceed the cutting of 25,000 board feet. Right. right now they'd say, it'd say something like, and that includes one year prior, you know, cutting one year prior to the request. So, so Alan, though, yeah, would, that would be a problem with Alan when it, it finally it, reviews it, but for now it's still there. It, you know, Could be a problem. Alan is aware that we are exposed at the moment. I mean, the, the, the matter is we're exposed at the moment, period. Yep. So to add this one more little piece right. doesn't really materially change our exposure. Right. Um, he would like to see us eventually get to a place where we're not exposed. I don't know if the five acres will come up again, but part of the thinking of the five acres was that uh, if there were many board feet of, uh, within that five acres, that uh, there would be significant trees in order to accomplish that, because you'd have to have some very mature trees. And those would be predicted in many years. Is that right? 
The significant trees are always protected. Right. That's right. correct. Having said that, 25,000 um, board feet seemed to be, from at least it's just like 10 minutes of Google. Right. The low end of how many board feet you can get out of an acre of land. Right, I mean, right. Like zero, you could get out zero, but it can yeah. go up to as much as like 100,000. <laughs> So, so there are there are communities in the state of Massachusetts that do have special. There are. Um, they are. And, and denied outright, which is why the Green Communities Act requires that you adopt solar by right. Yeah. No, wait. What do you mean by I don't know? What so, do you mean solar is solar groundwater solar is has historically been denied or governed through special permits mm -hmm. historically for a long time, which uh -huh. is why when the state adopted the Green Communities Act. And one of the incentives, for, or one of the things that a town needs to adopt in order to become a green community, is to make solar by right. Oh, um, so you can't deny it at all. Right. But like that's well, what, except but this, for through a standard site site plan, right? You always have right. If there was there some sort of they didn't meet the setback requirement right. or the height requirement or the wetlands or yeah, some basic thing. So that's basically the same thing as what Alex saying, is it, or that this 1985. Thing is saying that you can't deny it. Well, I'm saying there's an inconsistency in state policy where they acknowledge that it, it was being denied or made into a special permit for a long time, and then they provided an incentive for towns to make it oh. uh, approved by site by right. oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay, so yes, I mean, uh, this is just again a quick Google search. New, New Marlboro, West Hampton, Westminster Towns, and South Bridge, East Hampton, have also have all have requirements for special permits for large scale. Right. So, so, so also, almost all, many, many, many of those towns, most towns, I think, allow setback plans without it being put on the deed, and so out. Alan is a careful reader. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. Yeah, all all the municipalities. Yeah, well not no, there are a few that don't. Yeah. We're, we're, we're amongst a, a very few that require uh, the, the tree become permanent. Yeah. And it's yeah. certified. So and, and that's again Alan reading the law. And I, I first thought he was wrong because it seemed like how could every other city have it otherwise? Yeah. But actually I'm reading it. I'm just pointing out what it's actually said. You're probably right. So, um, yeah. yes, and um, and uh, you know, one significant thing is that this has never been tested in a, in a court of law. So the, the definition of reasonable has never been challenged. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I personally am of the mindset that you don't need to reduce risk to zero. That there's a trade-off when you reduce risk to zero, you do nothing, and you you accept the op, you know the op opposite. And so I, I'm hoping that we can find something that he'll be less concerned by, but maybe not. You know, unless we're, it just seems impossible that we'll ever get to the point where we can guarantee without a shadow of a doubt that. The, the word reasonable will never be challenged. Is he willing to work with us if there are any languages? I don't know if we need to work with him. I think we need to work more with the planning office and then I think it's their mm -hmm. their job to um, to run it by yeah. I, I could ask Carolyn about how that that yeah. would work. Um so is there so go ahead, I don't want to know what you said. No, go ahead, Jen. No, is there a is there an angle? I mean to me, there's a piece of the wording about health, except mm -hmm. when it affects the health and welfare of the community. And I, I don't know, I've often wondered, there's got to be somebody who has done, you know, has some data on the size of solar panel or whatever versus trees. You know, like here's the benefit of whatever size tree versus, you know, because, I mean, there's got to there's be, I've never found it, but there's got to be something out there. I mean, that's the argument about, oh, somebody wants to take down a tree and put solar on their house, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think Google then all the hits seem to be from the, the industry, the solar industry, yeah. saying, oh, you'll do much better cutting down your giant tree. Um, there is an expert 
Um, I think he's from Tufts. He's a retired professor from, I want to say Tufts University. He, he um, spoke, Bill Muma, yeah. um, spoke last spring at Smith College uh, and generated a lot of food for thought that continues on about this whole, you know, mm -hmm. net balance. And um, he's definitely crunched a lot of numbers on carbon sequestration. Uh -huh. That is a very small part of the picture. Yeah. And again, that's an area where I feel like um, you know the original draft ordinance that we were asked to endorse really only looks at carbon sequestration. And there are so many other services, as we know, the trees provide that are left out of the equation. You know, um, regulating temperature, mitigating stormwater, cleaning air, cleaning water, um, a habitat for critical species. And so I think all of those pieces need to somehow be con um, considered, and we we just got to find the the right language to put it into an ordinance. Here's the other piece, and you and I spoke about a little bit about this when we had our subcommittee meeting. Is how can we create the, um, really a larger city plan that incentivizes us to encourage? solar panel installation where they really should be, which is over parking lots and on buildings. Mm -hmm. and exhaust so, that. Yeah, exhaust it before we hit right. trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a flow chart. Have you considered this yet? What are the options? And if that's not available, then consider removing the tree. But how many go to that first question of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's money. It's about money. Yeah. There's no plan that you can't incentivize developers to use good behavior other than penalizing them when they use bad behavior. Yeah. So, or incentivizing them to use good behavior. Or, yeah, and, and which the ordinance already does. You get a site plan from the, you get approval from the planning from the planning office if you install it in certain areas and you have to go to the board if you do something else. I mean, under the, the way the city attorney reads the state law, that's basically all it's going to give us at this point. So the key, in my view, is to tweak the significant tree ordinance, which is where all the teeth lie anyway, and to add, as we discussed in the meeting, look at a multiplier for the, um, for the, for the mitigation if you cut over X amount of four feet acres, what have, what have you, um, so that it's a large scale development and they're just clear cutting Okay, well you reached oh. your five acre max and now you're paying triple whatever it oh, is. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, oh yeah. And, yeah. and that way you disincentivize somebody right, to right. you know make the offer on the oh. piece of And suddenly you've property. incentivized them to go to yeah. the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> and and, and oh. change, possibly change the look back period too. Is it? Well, the look back period is already closed in the significant yeah. tree ordinance. They're yeah. just double closing it in the uh, solar model. By close? Yeah, there's a 12 month, right? Yeah, 12 yes. month, there's a 12 month look back in the significant tree right. protection. Uh, it could not be hard to make that a longer period. Yeah, possibly. But the piece of property would already have to have a significant tree on it in order for that to be triggered. Significant tree is 20. Yeah, it's not, it's not huge. It's not huge, but Todd, I'm wondering if um, what we could say is that a significant tree is defined as 20 inches up to the exhaustion of 10,000 square, or 10,000 board feet, and then it becomes significant at 10 inches. You know, I'm like, I'm wondering if you can ratchet it down so that um, the more they take out, the more you're protecting not just the 20 inch trees, but all the trees. Yeah, and then and the other the other benefit of that is it applies to all land uses, not just solar. Yeah, which feels like a, which gives which gives um, the solar industry less of a reason to feel targeted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because frankly, we don't want to target sure, them, of and uh, you know we wouldn't want this for any other purpose. Mm -hmm. But one thing Carolyn said is that there really aren't any other purposes that would want to do this sort of thing. Like pot is not considered, you know, we're long past cutting down forests for pasture. Like there's just no money there. So it would be it would be for agriculture, and that would require that's protected and would require like a, a, a timber plan, timber removal plan under ag laws. And then pot is even more heavily regulated. It's not even considered an agricultural product. 
So we could that just simply ban, it's not already, ban the removal of trees for the purpose of growing pot. Well, then the other obviously purposes of oh, reason would be residential the development. development. Yeah. And the city has lots of regulation about that. About tree, tree removal and replacement. Yeah, I mean, oh. you know, usually they extract a 50% of the land must be converted to permanent protection. You know, well, maybe you could do just that same thing for a solar. Well, that was going to be in the new draft, mm -hmm. but is that enough? Like, we could still lose 50% of a very large parcel of land. Yeah, but they'd have to pot buy twice as much land Yeah. in order to protect it, which would add a financial disincentive. Well, you'd be surprised how much money they can make. And Carolyn said that the Willard property, um, even though they're going to have to pay a huge fine for the, all the significant trees they cut down, they're like completely nonplussed about it. Mm -hmm. Oh. So I think we have to be, we have to really give this teeth. And Rich, this ties into the, the last piece that we talked about with the idea of substantially increasing the um, dollar amount per, D, per uh, DBH inch for the removal of trees. Um, you know, I think we all we agree that ninety dollars per inch is just vastly, vastly under what it will cost. Like, for example, let's say we do have a solar industry that's cutting down five hundred trees, and they do need to replace all those trees. Like, first of all, we're overwhelmed by the number of trees we need to now plant, and second of all, it's going to cost you so much more than ninety dollars per inch tree plant all these trees. Like the real cost of doing that job is just vastly higher. And so for services from small trees is very small. Very small. I think, I think also, you know, there's a legislative angle to this. When when the state changed uh, the regulations to the, to the SMART program recently, they claimed that they provided disincentives for forest salt. But they really didn't, which is why we've seen a record number of clear-cut forest installation. But they only really take place in Western Mass because the only property that's cheap enough to install a solar on forest and property is in Western Mass. All the stuff in Eastern Mass is higher and better use as a subdivision. So I think the, the Western Mass delegation should be made aware of this particular, particular Western Mass issue uh, and some pushback should be made uh, for future changes. Yeah, it's it's happening fast and furiously. Um, someone sent me a photograph um, looking up from a, a peak in North Adams on the landscape, the forested landscape, and it's just like this big chunk. It just like been bitten out with solar arrays on it, and it felt very unfortunate. Like that was a, that was a that was a wildlife corridor that was providing tons of other services, and it just felt so un, um, poorly sighted. So, um, so what I would propose that we do tonight is be clear that we are not endorsing this new draft. Like, I think that's the first thing we need to do is affirm, because I think that the planning board and the legislative committee want to know where we stand on this draft. So, um, so. <clears throat> A suggestion is that we affirm with a vote that we are not endorsing this draft. That would be the first thing. The second thing we could do is to um, affirm, in theory, um, language pending, that we support the idea of closing the, the uh, loophole of the ordinance as it now stands, with a look back to it. And then the third would be to affirm our interest in being actively engaged in this um, you know, project of trying to craft a, um, an ordinance that balances both interests. So it means we need to make a... If you're ready, I mean, um, we can discuss more. We can also discuss after a motion has been made. Just in response to what you shared, Todd, might be worth like inviting some of our legislators to the meeting. Oh, that's another thing. I, I Thank you for reminding me. I did reach out to um, Senator Joe Comerford. Um, I haven't reached out to Lindsay Sabadosi yet, but I did reach out to Jo and just let her know that the Zoning Act of 1985, per Alan's remarks, is just vastly outdated and needs to be updated. Now, 
she's not going to know what to, what to do with that, and I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, it's at least a starting point. I I don't think we're quite ready yet to involve them in a like to invite them to a meeting until we have we've done I think a little bit more of our own research, but right we can at least you know plant the seed in the brain so well, would a start be um, just dealing with that um, unreasonably regulate piece? Yeah. Try to re rewrite, yeah. rewrite it? Um, this is where I always like to be talking because this feels like so far outside of my <laughs> the, the writing of laws regarding regulation. The, the so amendment, so amendment of chapter 48. People have been trying to amend the Zoning Act for 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to alert them of yet another challenge with the Zoning Act, which is written by developers. <laughs> to be clear, the, the tree ordinance right, that protects protected trees, that's something that is not that difficult to tackle. Well, the, the, the act that the city of the, 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 the piece of legislation that the city attorney is claiming is blocking the right. stage. I see that as state law. That's yes, but I'm talking, but I'm saying that we feel that there's some protection from our local free ordinance. The city is free. Yeah, I, 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 that's certainly the fastest way, in my opinion, yeah. to get the lion's share of disincentives as quickly as possible. It's not, it's not what was no. written, but no. in my view, it's the fastest way to get some level of protection. Right. And the process of doing that is back to the city council. City council, but it's, so it's not a, a giant hurdle for chapter no. Three. no, and Alan's already, pretty, you know, all, all we'd be doing is tweaking yeah. the significant tree orders, which Alan has obviously already approved. So it seems like that should be a priority because then that gets it. So we yeah, you are going to get now. It is universally, you know, it, you are going to get pushback from anyone anticipating a larger scale development because yeah. it would be. Disincentivizing all large scale right. tree panel. If we came up with compelling language to change um, that law of 1985, what would the process be? Ultimately, the legislature has to vote on it. You're talking about the now state, 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 state level. level. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about rolling a whole other amount. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get like as a someone, little rock. As someone, as someone who does legislative law yeah. on the state level, it's, yeah. it's, but is that that's what it would require? They would have to vote on it. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah. years. It would have to be passed, and then it would have to be you know signed, yeah. signed by the governor. It's probably a five or ten year project. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I agree <laughs> in theory uh, that. It seems like this the, tightening up the significant tree ordinance could be could, could be the way we go. I don't think I'm ready for us to vote on something like that today. Personally, I don't think we're ready for that. Like we, I feel like there's more like we could flush out flush out language and so forth. But I think our job today is to let them know what what how we feel about this. Yeah. And um, and maybe do a, a Todd. What do you think about the short term closing of a loophole? Do you think that that makes sense for them to try to uh, at least put look back language on um, the existing ordinance? Um, not really, because huh. it already is in the significant tree ordinance, and if they. I mean, to me, I don't, I'm not. Someone would have to explain to me what added benefit there is putting a similar look back in the ground mount ordinance because it already exists in the significant tree ordinance, and any ground mount that requires the cutting of trees triggers the significant tree ordinance. Except, oh, in as much as it is triggers related to trees that are 20 inches large. Yep. The 20 inches right. is not small. It's pretty darn big. But, but, but I think what you're saying I'm is thinking it's closer to that than that. That feels more like 14 or something. <laughs> <laughs> As a fisherman, I think. Where's 11? Yeah. <laughs> Here's 11. There's 22. Right there. And there's 8, oh, yeah. so it's actually that. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's a big, a pretty big well, size well, tree. Okay. Well, I guess. Well, yeah. yeah, but I think he's saying that the look back, adding a look back clause 
without the additional thing about including all trees. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense because we already have it in the significant tree. Order. So Todd, you're suggesting that we don't we don't go the tack we don't recommend going the tack of adding a look back to the existing ordinance, but rather to properly correct the significant tree order. Well, they may not be mutually exclusive. I, I, off the top of my head, I really don't, because you would have to, you're starting to go down the rabbit hole already because you're introducing the clear cutting of trees to an ordinance that is really kind of quiet about that I already. Know. Yeah. So you're, you're opening it up, and I don't know, I mean, I guess we would have to have Carolyn talk to Alan and see what well, limits. Well, wait, you're not introducing it. It's not quiet about it currently. Currently, it prohibits. <clears throat> The removal of 25,000 square feet or more for the purposes of solar installation. So all that we would add to that current language is, and that includes trees that have been cut one year prior to the request for a permit. Is there any time that um, the current because uh, remember, current we're not looking ordinance. at current. None of this right, current. right, right. So um, the the old one that this was trying to replace. Yeah. Is there any time that that would be triggered without triggering the significant tree ordinance? Mm -hmm. Because yes, it, if you had no significant trees on there. Little tree. Right. Okay. And that's so. So yes, to that point, it would the significant tree ordinance wouldn't save us at all. Right, that's what I'm saying. So maybe temporarily the loophole thing would be productive. But I'm no expert on it. No, we're not charged with writing city ordinance. So I, I, you know, frankly, I think that we should pull our support of the ordinance and say we look forward to working with the city solicitor and the planning commission to the greatest extent possible to craft an ordinance that reflects the city's desire to protect health and health system. Is that a motion? I'll move second. Sure, that's a motion. <laughs> yeah, that's I'll a second. second. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> <laughs> you think you've got the camera back? <laughs> the notebook's on fire right now. <laughs> in accordance with 350-12.3 on the second page. Is that the tree ordinance? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're, uh, Todd, can you say that again a little bit slower? And maybe tweak the ending, uh, I mean, unless you don't want to, but it, um, you said in order to protect healthy ecosystems, and I think it's in order to strike that balance. And that sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that we um, rescind, rescind uh, our um, support of the um, existing changes to the uh, to 18.231 uh, and that we look forward to working with the city solicitor, solicitor and the planning office on crafting appropriate language that would strike the balance between the development of renewable energy assets and the protection of our force. So we just changed at the beginning. You said existing changes. I think you meant proposed changes. Proposed, yeah, well, yeah. And probably the verb wouldn't be rescind because we never gave support for those proposed changes. Mm -hmm. So can we just say we oh. do not support? Mm -hmm. That's true. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we didn't support this. Yeah. We supported something else. That's true. Okay, so we, we had a motion. We had a second. Does anyone want to um, move to um, accept the um, amended motion now? It's been amended now by Molly. I move to accept the amended motion by Molly. And I second that. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Rich, do you want to chime in? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, can you clarify, is that um, a vote to accept 
the amended version, and then you're going to do another vote, or is that a vote to no, that was, approve that was a, the amended version? Yes, that was a vote to approve the amended okay. version. Yep. Of the motion. Sure. Not of the rest of, of, of the motion. Of Todd's motion. <laughs> right. Okay, let's see, where are we? All right, Harper Day, it's spring for yes. all outdoors. <laughs> are we? Ah, uh, uh, so soon. Okay. Oops. So and thanks for going to that uh, meeting when you found out about it. I yeah. think it was really critical that you did go. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was glad to. All right. So at the last meeting, we discussed, uh, Sue and I had proposed for activities for Arbor Day, and why don't you just go down that list of four, it's on page three of the minutes. Start with uh, the book distribution, if you do have something on that. Um, start with one of the things, or? No, 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 we just, well, we decided upon it. It's been ordered. No, I am. I'm not aware of them. Okay. So, Colin Lilac should be able to present an iron with a red And anything with volunteers for that? Um, I haven't done anything with volunteers. I did last week. I um, called the school department to try to list fifth grade art teachers, and um, they didn't get back to me. So, um, so I have a suggestion. The best thing you should do is email. Each yeah. individual uh, principal. Just the principals, I'm not. Okay. Yep. We'll try. Have you already done that, Marilyn? I can have the impression. No, but working on that. I believe I have all the email addresses for the principals from three years ago when we did tree planting okay. at each of the schools. Those would be online, but the fifth grade art teachers don't seem to be listed anywhere. So, um, do you want to? Do that, or do you want me to look up the principles and email? What's the deadline for the contest? I don't know. I contact Molly. I contacted Molly Fryer because I was willing to um, prior to her. I was willing to um, you know hand carry um, postcards or posters or whatever into the elementary schools. So um, uh, Marilyn provided me with a list of all the schools, and then I needed some kind of Materials, so I contacted Molly and she is going to mail them to me. So I, I don't know what the date the It's March sometime. Yeah, it's right around the corner in March. Yeah. As soon as I get them, I'll take them to the school. I just thought it'd be a more, yeah, you know, I can walk into the person and yeah. say, hey, here's the stuff. Can you please put these in the art teacher's mailbox? Can you please put them in the fifth grade teacher and get one of the principal? Yeah. Just have a personal. Mm -hmm. So that along with the email will make a difference. Okay. Um, and how about things with the Y reaching out? We were going to visit. How that go? We did. We looked. We had two, uh, couple, couple of ideas of what to do in uh, for trees. A fairly good number of them. Uh, with the swale, there's a, sw a swale and a. And um, berm. Berm, the berm, and, yeah. and a swell, more of a berm, yeah. So we think it's plantable all on the berm. So it's, it's probably eight or nine trees. Oh, so, fabulous. Um, I think, though, that we, we have not, someone else was contacting. That yeah. was me. I just got the information today because your yeah. computer was stuck on the cave. Yeah. So I just got the information today. I will contact uh, Julie tomorrow and. Um, and just to, to be, I just need to be really clear about the language. So the trees would be setback trees, and therefore they would be city owned in per perpetuity. And, okay. And that they, the city would be responsible for maintaining them. Right. And you saw in that email there on the parking, just Correct. the parking lot side. Yep. Yep. Of the, uh, the wires. The bar, the bar. Yeah, I know exactly. So yeah. Yep. Yep. You give a number and then a yep. species. Yeah. And a couple yeah. species. Like yeah, yeah. With, with yep. an alternative for the uh, also. Mm -hmm. Right. And then on the yep. medium sized trees? 
they, we were talking big trees that would drop over the, the wire or false cypress to create a screen. Mm -hmm. Those two different mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's one or the other. Kind of, one or the other. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the wall servers are fairly narrow and they were packed in tightly. The, 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 I don't understand the whole thing. The, apparently, the neighbors were promised some kind of screen. Yeah. Originally, and there is no screen. So, mm -hmm. yeah, wall surface leaves small branches that would cover. I don't know what they're. Are we going to let them choose? Or well, it's kind of a negotiation because they have to accept. Yeah. You know, and so if they object to whatever tree, then they kind of get. They, they and they get, would have to sign the, the um, yeah. agreement. And it goes on their deed. It goes on Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure I have all the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I will contact her tomorrow and try to push to the oh. trees. She's used to get, can, gets back pretty quick. We but. identified one or two trees that have been planted in, in, in public way near the. Don't need to discuss. There's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of trees. Yeah. There are a lot of trees in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but there's a hole there. And there. Yeah. We'll probably put a tree in yeah. over there. But it's really, we need their, right. their land. Right. So I will uh, talk to them tomorrow. Okay. So it's either, um, you know, one benefit of the bald cypress is to create a screen, a thicker screen, yep. but the benefit of the shade tree is obviously to go over, over. the parking lot and mm -hmm. provide more shade to the cars. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. right. They're both significant because the people are in a hardship across the street in the way. Yeah. That place is like yeah. probably one of the busiest parking lots in the town. Mm -hmm. and, it's terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so to have some kind of like screen and elms don't provide that screen because they yeah what about rob um what about planting the shade trees and then creating a, a, a closer under the wire or inviting them i mean it doesn't have to be our yeah. job to create a smaller hedgerow screen or some kind of a understory screen well i would have thought they would have had to have done that by now so. I think they did it. I, I don't know though all the machinations, but there's been a lot of different things planted there. The mm -hmm. issue was whoever and I don't know what landscaper installed the stuff, but it was never the appropriate stuff oh. for the site because there used to be Norway maples there and it's quite shady. So uh, they put junipers in there. They put all this stuff oh, in there that was like, I'm like that crap's gonna die. You know, yeah, but did. nothing so, likes to be under a Norway maple. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it was, yeah. So I'm wondering yeah. if we can have our cake and eat it too, yeah. in that we can get shade trees and you can maybe, Jen, as a horticulturalist, mm -hmm. propose some understories that would also provide a screen. You mean understory trees or no, shrubs? I mean, no, shrubs, shrubs probably. So, I mean, something so that would like when they, when you flash your, your, yep. your high beams. Yep, yep. So the issue, the, issue, the yeah. issue there would be who owns those shrubs, shrubs because I think the deal is that the, this is what I'm I'm projecting. But I think their their hesitation is they have quite a few trees on the property, and you know a limb will fall. They've, they've spent a lot of money in tree maintenance, and you know one just broke the fence at the playground and stuff like that. So I think their their reticence was like we don't want to add any more that we, we're going to have to take care of. So my guess is the shrub, unless, yeah, I doubt it. Yeah. But we're not in the business of planting the no. trees. Yeah, exactly. So I could, I can could now, some suggestions. yeah, sure, sure. The trees, yeah, I can talk to her about that. But that's my guess is they'd be like, okay, if we don't have to take care of these trees and if somebody else is going to prune them and if they go in the wires, it's not us. You know? That's my guess. So, yeah. but I'll talk to her tomorrow. Cool. All right. So, so yeah, two different models, each having. Um, yep, perfect. That's helpful with the screen. That, that. All right, we talked about the poster contest. Next steps on that. Um, anything on the tree speak, Kelly? Yeah, um, uh, Karen. So Karen and Madeline are working on a map together. Madeline is uh, working off that brochure. So it's just going to be a single sheet, probably folded three ways, with a full map on one side. And then in, uh, just bare information on the other. I think she's going to probably use um, like tree benefits of each tree. You know, just uh, the tree, the address, basic information, and then maybe the some tree benefits from a tree benefit calculator. Because that did not go into her audio. Do you think she might want to come do a demo before Arbery, or do a show and tell? Um, I don't 
don't know if she's going to be around Arbor Day. I think I remember talking to her that she might not be there. So she'll definitely get the brochures out and we'll do a big um, media blitz. In fact, the week before, Rob, I'm sorry, Bridge, I'm thinking the week before will be the week that I alert the press and that you and Maxie go out and actually put the um, labels on the trees. So will that work for you? And what do you think of having the brochures? Just at the tree whip giveaway or? Um, so the tree giveaway for sure. And, and then permanently, I mean, I'll take your suggestions. But right. Permanently, library, city hall, the senior center. Mm -hmm. And then um, a PDF of it might make sense. This is really is a yeah. digital project. Yeah. Um, right. If it was a digital version, that would make a lot of, mm -hmm. it would go along mm -hmm. with it so that it yeah. could be a resource people could find somewhere. Yeah. Well, it will be posted on our city web page. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, uh, the last thing for Arbor Day, uh, we're going to update the letter to the landscapers, which I don't have uh, completely revised yet. And then, um, Rich, could you, at your convenience, um, Send me the list. Yep, that's what I list to do. Okay, right. and that's available on the Google um, sheet, uh, Sheets, right? For, is, there, is there a tab in the list? Because I think we talked about being able to add when it. I, when I get Marilyn the list, we'll populate a new, a new uh, Google Doc. <coughs> yes. You can add to it. Uh -huh. Yes, one more thing yes. is that the other thing my daughter will finish is planning to do is create a 30 second educational video. Um, um, very simple cartoonish kind of graphics um, about the importance of planting trees on the east and west sides of houses to um, cool how. Um, she's actually submitting it as part of a, uh, a short video contest. So the question is whether or not she'll be able to, she'll lose all rights to it, or whether she'll be able to share it with you all. I'm hoping that a lot. So that might be another part of our educational. Yeah. Awesome. All right, that's it for uh, The Arbor Day, excuse me, Arbor Day poster contest is marked, the deadline's March 15th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to mention, circle back to the conversation about the whys that uh, Rob and I also uh, went and uh, looked at the front of the KM apartments on Fruit Street uh, and then we also looked at the senior center parking lot so we, we have arranged for a meeting next Tuesday with the executive director and assistant director of the housing authority to talk about the KM plan because we seem to be very enthusiastic about them. I'm still working to try to get together with Marie Westford regards to the senior center parking lot, so I'm sure they're welcome out so That's great here, progress. Here's a detail for them. It appeals to do some of these plantings at Arbor Day, mm -hmm. but, it, but the what's available at Arbor Day might be all cypress mm -hmm. and not, and not Princeton. Mm -hmm. no. So that, that's just a Little twist the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, so so we we may end up actually having to because some of the trees that we want to plant for Arbor Day are what we have possibly coming as bare root. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to be delivered because the buffaloes winter is a little different than ours. They may not be the ground could still be frozen partially. Mm -hmm. So we may have to scale back the way we do plantings for Arbor Day or swap out species uh -huh. going through Amherst Nursery. So we have to kind of figure that out. At least we're going to line, line everything up and then we'll be able to actually get a planting done or you know, individual plantings at each place based upon stock and then just come back and finish. Plan B. And so yeah. for the Y, we do have the ball circus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, I mean, I think we ultimately agree that the right key for the right Far more important than on oh yeah, no, it is, and that's why we're just trying to get all everything mm -hmm. aligned. And if the housing authority agrees, I mean, we could it could take us a whole season to, to do the housing yeah. authority, but yeah. at least we have the agreement. You know, it's yeah. going to happen. At least we have the agreement with the why we planted something for them, and then we'll yeah. come back and finish it up. Right. You know, all we really need is a photo 
Because you're a volunteer, you're yeah. willing to come back, you know, yeah. pretty much. Oh, shop at it would be really nice to be able to plant some. Yeah, like we did be, last time. It would be nice to do cool. something like we did yeah. in front of the Gazette. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Even if cool. it's just in one place right. yeah. instead of two. Like, right. I know from volunteers and people stopping by the Arbor Day with the table that um, the idea of getting a relationship going with their housing authority and being able to plant on those properties is something that people will respond really positively to. Mm -hmm. Good thing. Mm -hmm. and if it's on Arbor Day, we might attract some of those people. A little, some new people can mm -hmm. use it as a building. building. Okay. Holly, you up? I'm up. Uh, Marilyn, are we done with? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is the planting uh, sub subcommittee, planting and planning subcommittee. Um, so we just met a couple of days ago, Hillary, Marilyn, and I, and added a few more lines onto the um, the five-year plan. So for 2019, we um, we were just looking more at the um, the ward-based plantings and. We definitely are emphasizing four to six for for next year, um, but also so we 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 have fifty trees down for ward six, and then um, to even up um, to even up wards um, one five seven and six, um, we would add ten more trees to each of those wards. Um, and so then, like with the exception of three and four, which have a lot, that evens up the other ones. Right, one, five, seven, and six. Well, yeah. not six. Six not is six. already getting. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, I mean, one, one, one five, seven. Uh, yes, yes. The ten would be one, five, and seven. Okay. In particular, seven B, because I don't think we've done any so out in the leaves area. Does each ward have the same number of people and houses and things? Well, the same number of people. That's you know all. It's all uh, you know census data. It's a lot of funds are being distributed. I mean, we we all agree that the downtown areas need to provide its trees, and that's why three and four are so a lot more. Are a lot more, and we actually you'll get to that in, yeah. in the next year. But and, and just remind Ward Ward Six. That's Marion Lavarge. Yeah, did someone? I already contacted her. Um, and, and what's the. Yeah, so we're. Yeah. Okay, she wants okay. to do site visits with us. She said she'd do everything. Right, that's what I thought. Okay, I just wanted to say so Ward, Ward 6 looks like it's. It's, it's, it's a go. Ward 6 is getting a lot of attention this year. They're going to yeah. pave a lot of streets there as well. So oh, yeah. It's nice. Gonna look, it's going to look really this nice. This is great. Yeah. This is a great that's thing. That's really good. You know, the, the doing it in, in a blitz fashion, I think, makes, you know, makes them feel like they're. They're loved. They're remembered. So for 2020, um, as far as ward-based ward plantings go, we're, we're adding 50 onto Ward 4. So that kind of brings it up closer to Ward 3. So those are the kind of the downtown wards. Um, and then the other thing for 2020 we're going to start doing is um, doing more specific emphasis on setback trees. So, we took instead of 125 for priority streets, we we made that into 100, and we took 25 to allocate specifically for setback trees. Um, and we we put down that we would focus on Bridge Street, whatever. It seemed like there were a lot of setback opportunities there, so for that year we would focus on Bridge Street. But in, in subsequent years, too, we would do more. You know, specific allocation for setbacks. So 2020, 25 setbacks altogether? Yes, so this priority no. column. 25 pri setbacks. Priority areas, we basically divided, so there, there have been five categories, and mm -hmm. right. because we hear that the setback priority is important, yeah. we divided that. So, so now we have a, a separate column for setback. Right. But it doesn't mean, Rob, so, so here's where our thinking was. Our thinking was that we have priority streets, but a lot of them are really primed for setback, as you've argued many times. Well, 
And so we, we thought as we would just shift those into their own column and be thoughtful about targeting areas that are primed for setback and start identifying where those areas are. So for example, right. like on that part of Bridge Street so close to the Coolidge Bridge, where we yep. can't plant on the tree belt anyway, yep. we could really focus on all, and maybe you already have, and, and by the way, all of this is couched as we're presenting this as a proposal. Oh yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, I just thought the number 25 was low for setbacks total, but maybe it's, it's not. It's not for setbacks total. It just means we're carving out of the priority streets. Uh, 25 um, trees. 25, uh, at least, at least 25. And actually, okay. I mean, we bandied around between 25 and 50. I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're going to well exceed the 25. Yeah, total. yeah, yeah. I, Every year, um, hopefully. I think it's more like being deliberate about starting to think about, okay, if we're doing setbacks, where are the, where are the areas where the setbacks give us more thing for a buck? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, bridge tree is always the one that comes to mind because we can't even touch the tree belt beyond mm -hmm. Graves Avenue. Well, and then we could, if, okay, the, you know. You can't do setbacks either past Graves, uh, uh, not Graves, uh, Grant. Grant, Grant, that You can't do setback planting. Oh, really? Because it's not a city right away. So the only, thing, the, only thing, the only thing that can happen there is that Tree Northampton can work with the residents to actually plant trees on their own property. But they could never be city trees. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, why is that? Because it's, it's not because our it's public state, highway. Because it's state highway. Oh, my oh. Even though it's within the... I already asked Alan Seawell for oh his. Wow. wow, that's amazing. Oh. Well, we got him two trees okay. before the oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, those trees, those trees don't. Okay, so this can the... landowners working with Tree Northampton can they plant within that um, right away? They, they sure they can. But They're they can, private but, property. Well, hold on a second. It's not necessarily private property. That's if true. it's Mass Highway's layout and you plant a tree in there. And Mass Highway decides they want to widen the road, the tree goes away, there's no public shade tree here, oh. nothing. So you have to make sure that if you're going to do those types of plantings, that they're actually physically on the person's property. Awesome. Okay. And the trees cannot come from the city, they have That's to come right. from the tree farm. So the funding is, is, becomes an issue. Right. Okay, well we can work with that. Is there a standard width for the right, for the um, state highways? I don't have a plan for that. Yeah. Do we know what it is for bridge trees? We don't even know what it is there. Yeah. Not, not past the So layout. it takes some research okay. to find out. It's, an old, it's an old county road, so my guess would be it's 66 feet wide. All right. So maybe that's not what uh, I was saying. That's that's that section terrible. of the city. Having said that, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have that be a great gateway? I mean, it just feels like such a lost. Well, it is because you're going, you're going into the, you're driving in this open area, and all of a sudden you're driving to a forest, basically. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, the way that, you know, the other part of Bridge Street is kind of has somewhat of a semblance of canopy, yeah. plus everything we planted. Well, once the stuff from Sheldon, we planted some heavy yeah. trees on the top yeah. of that hill behind the fence, so some of that will yeah. grow up. All right, well that, that just, to me, that doesn't feel like an insurmountable barrier. It just makes it a little bit more challenging. It just, it's a funding issue that, you know, we have to figure out how. And I did have a long conversation with a resident who wanted trees planted in the tree belt, and I had to explain to her the whole situation. And so I asked her to, I said, your next step would be to talk to your city councilor to see if the city councilor could actually utilize their position to talk to Mass DOT. Don't know if that would make any effective changes there or not, but it's kind of hard. Mass DOT just really just kind of says no to everything. So. Um, <laughs> and that was last fall. They're hard to get. That was last fall because I also tried to actually get them to. I gave them Tree Northampton's information and said, if you're outside of the state highway layout, you could have Tree Northampton more than happy to plant a tree here. And of course, well, her husband is a golfer, so it's like the question of the lawn. Open spaces. Yes, but they wanted the tree belts fixed up, but I couldn't help them. But I try to I spend a lot of time with them to try to mm -hmm. walk. Perhaps it's not golfing on their front lawn. Well, I know, but uh, yeah, I worked in uh, I, I get what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had trees on either side of the house, small trees, and they didn't want a big tree. They have a very old house. Yeah. So yeah. But it does present a challenge. I mean the only thing we could ever hope for and if anyone's listening to this video, I probably would get shot mm -hmm. or fired, but it would be nice to actually have that whole section on Bridge Street after after the highway 
new uh, off ramp is completed there, that that is actually turned over to the city, similar to what they did on Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they putting a roundabout here? What are they doing here? I'm not really sure. I haven't seen the plans. Or I think I don't even think there's 25 percent, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Huh. All right. So that was all a lot of problems. Well, so we have to figure out some other priorities. Yeah, we can certainly. So anyway, we we would encourage suggestions for identifying priority setbacks. So that was our our thinking was. As we do setbacks, wouldn't it be great to blend priority streets and setbacks in some kind of a, you know, thoughtful way? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, all, all the priority streets virtually would benefit from more setbacks and less street elevators, pretty much. I mean, they, 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 usually the priority streets have four tree belts, at least on one side. So it would be great to get more setbacks. And I think what we're really looking towards that because Alicia and Rich have been working on a Okay. Oh, another thing we talked about at our planning subcommittee was um, just the idea um, of planting something in that um, circle in the industrial park, which is I looked it up and it is a property, yeah. but it's not it's not a high priority because it's not a place where people walk. What area of industrial park? But that that it's just this big open blank space right now. It would be kind of nice to have trees. I think if there were trees there, I can imagine people who work in the area kind of, kind of going and sitting on their vacation. Like the park. That's park. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually park. really big. Yeah. 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 And, and actually, Rich and I did set out to go plant that about two years ago, and then it got dug up. Just no, center the side, the circle? Thing. The whole thing got skilled. Well, it was used for a, a, a launch point for the construction of Day right. Avenue. Right. Oh. And then it was also used prior to that in 2010 and 11 for the launch point for the construction crew for North Street. Oh, and compacted. When they did, yeah. they take the the, oh. the, 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 the bike off too, and they right. put like yeah. mountain and then oh. they, and so that all that was going on just prior to almost trying to plan and yeah. so then we stopped to work. It's a Pleasant Street chunk yeah. circle. Is that the city property? As far as I know, yeah. I tried really hard to get a hold of somebody um, to talk about that. And you know, I got shuffled around. First of all, no one returned my calls. And then I got shuffled around between people. And I'll oh, get back to you. You know, well, just, just never. Circle. Yeah, it just never went anywhere. It's unfortunate looking. But the city doesn't own it. No, we own it. And do you decide what happens? No. Who is it? I mean, we, I mean we're, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go with some kind of a design and maintenance plan there. What I've been actually work, trying to work on is uh, with Western Mass Bees to see if they would actually plant uh, some, some plant material in there. Um, as far as putting shade trees in there, I would imagine we could probably put some shade trees in there, but they're gonna have to be large. So we can limit them up, so they don't obstruct right. for visibility issues. Right. You know, most roundabouts I've seen don't. I mean, of course, I could be wrong. The ones I've seen overly don't have trees in the middle of them. I've seen some of the Amherst new ones. Oh, and the uh, roundabout by Atkins. Yeah. Uh, no, not the one about by Atkins. There's one uh, further, like uh, just north of the city, on the way to EMS. Um, I, 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 I've okay. been wanting to take a picture of it just to show the mayor that roundabouts and trees actually do go. Exit to, three uh, in Brattleboro. Oh, that yes. Used, that oh. used to be. I have that old original performance yeah. for that. Yeah. Actually. I mean, and visibility is fine, and there's not. So I mean, it, it's definitely. Uh, I mean, it is our main. It's our property to maintain. Even though the city council has not like formally accepted Mass DOT's gift. Mass BOT basically turned over Pleasant Street from Hoyo Street all the way to the Flood Control Wall. And uh, that's Registry of Deeds. They just handed it wow. to Registry of Deeds. And, and you know, it's it so there. bounded up that almost any tree could still be for visibility. Yeah. Yeah. So we could actually probably go back and look at uh, for set, capture setbacks, would be the lower end of Pleasant Street. Because we kind of run out of tree belt. Yeah. But I mean, there is yeah. like the whole front of uh, there's some, the, well, the businesses like. Um, Hamlin Zimmerman, there's a lawn there. Yeah. There's not much lawn on the other side. Yeah. We still could look because you kind of, it's still again, you know, Pleasant Street obviously is still, in my mind, a priority where we should try to go back and just take yeah, so maybe that. Are you putting that as a, instead of 
Um, I'm not completely moving Bridge Street yet because I still feel like there's some, but but I do have uh, that we wrote in that little priority zone box mm -hmm. ask the Tree Commission for more suggestions. So Pleasant Street, including the round. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, anyone can always go on here and, and you know, add things. So if you have other suggestions for priority streets and priority setback zones, feel free. Um, the uh, the balance of priority street trees on um, in tree belts as opposed to um, setbacks. We can you know how do we want to juggle that? Do we want to keep it right now? It, we had suggested 120 versus 25, but we can balance that however the committee wants. And then of course I know that in a given year you can't adhere perfectly to this anyway so it's really just it's just guidelines my only, my only question is that because we seem to be on the path of planting more trees every year um, does the commission want to revisit the, the 250 max number or do we just want to leave it at 250 and then when we have the ability to plant more we just concentrate on the, the priority locations that are listed for that particular year because last year we Planted 297. Yeah. And, you know, we said 250. But, you know, nine of those, for example, are nine. 11 of those were trees that were donated, you know, the, the uh, chestnuts and the two red buds, right? So those, but those still count towards our overall planting. Um, you know, and I. Green Oak Hampton planted a few on their own. Yes. Yeah. All total is over 300. Over, over 300. <laughs> But I mean, so, I, so every year that we go, so for example, you know, I keep track of this just because of our growth award. So every year we ex, we seem to be pushing our own limits. Mm -hmm. um, and we are eligible for a growth award this for this past year. So I don't know if that's something that you all want to think about. And well, if you we, feel, if we you can feel it. this number to 300 if you want. Well, I'm just feeling like it's, at this point, we, we've done one year where it seems to be sustainable. The question is. Okay. Will it be sustainable the following year? Well, you know what, you're, I, I'm just thinking about what your crew didn't have to do last year, which is water. Well, we did water, though. You did? We did water, you right, right, water. right into August, and then we stopped, basically. Uh -huh. But you probably weren't humping it like you were. No, oh, no, no, no. We had two people watering the prior two years. Okay. We only had one person watering, and still, actually, we had about 300. Mm -hmm. 300 and some odd water bags out there, but we didn't need to water them as, you know, right. won't fill them as frequently because of the fact that it was raining. Yeah. Right. So I think that's a confounder that can really affect the number of trees you can the, handle. Right. The other sustainable, <laughs> the other issue is two things. One is that we're going to have to start putting uh, some kind of a trunk wrap on all these trees. Hmm. Every This this year, every tree that we plant is going to have some kind of a, uh, a trunk wrap to protect it. Part of the reason is because we experienced on Archer Street that we had uh, trees got hit by snow, uh, snow blowers mm -hmm. oh, or shovels, so I'm not much. sure, one of the two. The other issue is is that one of the sustain non-sustainable things we seem to have an issue with is actually going back and remulching these young trees and just kind of recreating the donut year after year. Uh -huh. So without that donut protection, if the donut gets flattened out by a homeowner or a landscaper, and now they actually have a lawnmower up against the side of the tree. So hmm. we, we may, you know, staff-wise, I don't have, I can't, I don't have the staff to, to actually, I have enough staff to get the trees moved, planted, and watered. Hmm. Don't have enough staff at the moment to actually go back and remulch like all the oh. 300 trees we planted last year. Wow. We probably could do it, but I don't know how we would. You know, we, we could do it virtually by the time we put the water bag on, but it's just also something else to something else to think about because the farther out we get, the more you know we're putting water bags on trees we planted yeah. three years ago when it's drought. Is that a is mulching something uh, we can do with volunteers? We could. We round up people with trucks. You could probably do I don't know how many per. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't be that difficult, but I still think we need to put the trunk wrap on them just to protect them year round. Mm -hmm. Just think until they're. Till the bark is thick enough and they're mature enough, the trunk wrap should stay on it, mm -hmm. just to protect them. So you're talking like, like 
No, uh, no, actually, uh, we have a uh, it's PVC or it's actually poly plastic that actually is black mesh, so it's breathable. And oh, we Rob and I. Oh, so you're not rubbing it against the tree? No, no, it actually sits there so and you can lift it up oh, and down. Uh, oh, like a tube, right. like a sleeve. Well, right. with a oh. very open weave. With an open weave. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what you're saying. And so it's, so it's somebody can't weed whack it. Yeah, Correct. No, so if you're going to have to weed whack it, you're going to have to pick the thing up and go like yeah. this. Oh, okay. But, but it, won't, it won't get cut with a weed whacker. No, it will not. Oh, no. So um, to, oh. to wrap this up, I, it sounds, that's okay. No, it just sounds like... We should probably stick with 250, C 300 as a bonus, and let and and that's just that also feels discretionary. Like that's also maybe more setback trees, or you know, it just feels like there's why not just keep that flexibility? It's I mean, we're definitely doing American chestnut trees again this year, so we'll be those. Um, you know why why create more stress on ourselves before we. Um, We've gone through this enough. So I'm just, just a How many years point. after the plant did you keep watering? Well, uh, we did uh, four years probably. Wow. Because the first year we planted, we had us, we had enough, we had almost normal rainfall. In two years, we had below normal rainfall. This past year, we we had above normal rainfall. But the problem with the rainfall is that it's coming at it's not one inch per week any longer it's like three right. inches in a week and then there's and two weeks of perfect. half an inch and right. then another week of six inches exactly. and so it's there's these strange spikes which are inconsistent so so yes yeah, about four years probably so there's a potential for a lot of water you know, yeah potentially if we go into a drought again absolutely yeah. so, so the growth the rewards only measure the no. number of trees planted, or do will they account for all the pruning? No, they, they they account for for example, um, which we couldn't we couldn't I couldn't do this year, but they account for the tree speed program, educational mm -hmm. programs, uh, the landscape like the educational outreach was one of the things that we achieved mm -hmm. because we actually had a public education component. So to get the growth award, it's not just planting trees; you have to show that you have markedly increased yeah. your planting, which we did from. 248 to uh, you know 297 and it also asked for the amount of volunteer hours so that was the other component so mm -hmm. so there's a bunch of different things for the growth award so we can achieve that in a lot of ways most communities don't get the growth award two years in a row never mind three years in a row so if you get it for three years in a row it's, it's pretty incredible mm -hmm. Great. but so yeah that's so yes to answer your question mm -hmm. there are other all right i think i'm going to move us forward um, an update from Tree I'm going to just yeah. look to Rob because um, I've missed the Saturdays um, and he's been out there Saturday. So we have been pruning trees really Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So with Rich, he's been there with us pretty much all those days. Um, we are getting through a lot of larger trees, which is very uh, time consuming. We, it's taking an hour per tree for wow. two people, because these trees are already uh, one feet. Yeah. Well, the trees, I, I counted a ring when that was 17 years old, the trees we planted today. Oh, okay. So 17 year old trees, at least 17 years old, so uh, we're really working hard on mm -hmm. doing them. It, it means that it's hard to judge how many trees, like once we're out of doing these larger trees, that they were neglected because mm -hmm. they were planted 10 years ago or longer. Well, so I neglected it just because they weren't young tree trained in the perfect time. So there are a whole bunch of us that are working hard trying to pull it under control. I think once it's under control, just We'll be working on the smaller trees that we have planted um, since this program really got going. And uh, I have been pruning some of those uh, that have planted the setback trees uh, early on when I had the first ones. And some of those trees are already uh, needing pruning, so we're chasing after some of those. Too. Uh, the, the, the elm trees in particular take the, the care to keep up with them and it's, a, it's kind of a liability like when we plant elm trees you have to think about because mm -hmm. if you don't take care of them 
It's very bad. The tree fast. Yeah, really bad fast. So you end up with a bigger. What did they do? Uh, what happens is that instead of going up and then gracefully separating out, they they, they have multi lead leaders low down, oh. and then those leaders get too heavy and then they break, oh. and you end up with like a really bad. And all the attachments are uh, really tight, and the tree has you know. You've got to trim up one liter early on. you got to get to one liter early on, and you have to select a buyer for branches that aren't so uh, tightly integrated. Oh. So, huh. uh, I mean, Jay Gerard, who's been sort of constructing, um, is, was discouraged, generally, by elm trees, generally. Mm -hmm. um, but um, thought that the Princeton elm is that we have been planting look pretty good in terms of being able to control this issue. It's interesting because the um, the American elm down on Con Street, that corner there, has a code on the stem. Just look at any tree. Even the trees I planted 20 years ago, I, I am ashamed of the fact that I never went back. Yeah. <coughs> well, it's unusual, I mean, to be honest with you, it's very unusual to have, like, follow-up like that. It's, it, it's I mean, unheard of. It's just can't, you set can't it, do set it. it and forget it. Really. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the payoff like down the road financially, and you have a, a wet storm like you know 2011. Right. You know the payoff is every yeah. tree that we go and we remove, or we have to do um, a tree clean, which is you know basically removing all the glossy branches and dead branches. Ninety percent of the time, those trees were never trained, right. and the reason that they are failing is because of that. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and you know, obviously, site conditions, but it's just, and some we're talking trees that are over 30 inches of DBH that mm -hmm. we're having now to go take huge limbs out of right. because they failed. Mm -hmm. But now there's that, that cut will never seal properly, so that tree unfortunately is yeah. you know, kind of sealed its fate. In a sense. Oh, wow. So, I felt a lot of response, a lot of interest in trying to catch up with this issue from Rich. But also, I, I see it too, and I look around town, and I'm, I worry that we're not on top of it. But I will say that when I travel, kind of speaking to what Jen is saying, we're more on top of it than a lot yeah. of people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But when you go to Europe, they yes. know how to train trees. Yes. Like, it's part of their culture. Well, it's just a heavier management, a horticulture management in general. Yeah. And people yeah. have higher awareness. But looking at in terms of load and how many trees we're planting each year, um, how are we ever going to keep up with all the pruning? Well, that's what I was. Trees a year. That's what I was referencing is that at the current rate, because we're pruning trees that are 17 years old, yeah. right. we can only do two people. Two. It takes an hour to do a tree. Right. But if we do them at the right time. Mm -hmm. It's 20 minutes, or 15 yeah. minutes per tree, right, right, right. And, and so hopefully we'll be good at it, and it'll be 15 minutes a tree, and we'll do it at the right time. And you'll have more people right. who know what they're doing. So a lot of the trees that we're just working on at Village Hill still are beyond a young. They wouldn't even pass on a young tree tree. No, yeah, it would be a tree clean at this point. Yeah, which is for a mature tree. So we're we're trying to tackle trees that are. 20 to 25 feet tall. Yeah, so I have an a, a, a 8.6 foot pole, so that's uh, 14 feet yeah. plus me. So I'm, I'm up there 20, you know, working that's 20 feet overhead with yeah. a pole. Yeah. That's very exhausting. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and the nice thing is that we're trying to we're trying to maintain the same core working days during the winter that we, we would during the spring, mm -hmm. early summer, and fall with the same people that are actually the people that are planning. Right. So we, we haven't captured everyone, but we've had the same core group of people um, that are actually coming out on those days to, to work with us. So we're keeping these folks in the loop, including the village show people that come on Tuesdays, but not every Tuesday. Right, sorry. Oh, no. definitely add that when um, over this season, going out and seeing some of the individuals, the independence that they're starting to have, like they're under supervision, but they can do a <coughs> consultation with the arborist, mm -hmm. and then they can work independently for a while before, quite a while before they have to go back and say, "All right, I'm stuck. What do I do next?" Mm -hmm. So that is progress. Yeah. Right. So we're we're, we're making progress, and I guess I'm just holding out that 
we're not sure about the speed we're going in relation to the, it's hard to measure the speed that we're going in relation to the project because we're, you know, like a bog down zone. So it's sort of like we're driving down the road right now, we're in mud. Yeah. We're hoping to be on pavement later. Yeah. So, <laughs> they're going at a different speed. Remind me after the meeting, um, you know, Wade, the guy who applied for Monroe Street, he's got a, a, a pin oak in front of his house that the city planted probably seven or eight years ago. It's definitely got a stem that is competing with the leader. And if we get that, a branch, and if we can get that off sooner than later, yeah, it'll exactly prevent a whole bunch of problems. Um, I think it's like oh. six, eight. North uh, Monroe yeah. Street. It, you know, it's a, it's a two-family. Yeah, one it's of the things that's happening with with our pruning, we've just been working on oak trees steadily right now, and, mm -hmm. and it's because by the if you kind of buy the book, there's no more pruning oak trees after the end of the month because of the okay. danger of infiltration of oak wilt. This is oh, no. pruning rich and oh, cool. in early spring. Yeah. So, so you know, they, re they recommend only pruning oaks out during the dormant period. You know, local is still in New York. They recommend that you don't create uh, mm. any sap flow, unnecessary sap flow, uh, especially in the spring, early summer, because uh, oh. of the beetles that are the tracks mm. that actually carry the oak wilt. They're, they're the vector. That's one way oh. of doing it. The other way of getting oak wilt is from grafted roots. So we're trying not to prune oaks unless it's an emergency. Until the dormant season, which will start again in the middle of mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. So it's like December to the end of February. December to the end of February. And I, Rob and I, when we went to uh, uh, the Tree Wardens Conference, uh, Nick Brzee, the plant pathologist, said that's the recommended pruning time now for oaks that you have to prune that. Yeah, so he sees oak wilt coming from the west, mm -hmm. yeah. just a month coming from the east, oh, God. Yeah. and lantern fly coming from the south. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think, I mean, it might be alarmist, but I do think the world is getting a little tougher for trees. Oh, yeah, that's so, absolutely so, yeah. 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 All right. There's nothing coming from the north that I know about. So. The white walkers. <laughs> <laughs> the white walkers. <laughs> the polar vortex. Okay. Um, any other business that I just hate about the chair? Um, I just was looking over the, uh, just a little tiny kind of thing, on the minutes from the last meeting under planting, neighborhood planting project, suggestion to add a box to the application for the number of times the applicants applied. Yeah. Did that happen? So or? what I did is on our, um, so I gave, um, first of all, I gave Rob, no, Rob, I don't know, Rob, I don't know, Rich, Rob. Just that, not right. Sometimes it's rich, rich, Rob, Rob. I, I did. I basically I completed all those tasks. Oh, Everything okay. that it says that I was supposed okay. to do. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Great. And I put it on the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is is the place. I put a place on the spreadsheet that says this out has this applicant applied before. And it's been it's been added to the application. Great. Oh, good. The language so box is put on, and uh, yeah. Karen also updated the. Um, application deadline for this 2019, so it's active. So anyone wants to oh, great. apply now, there it's good to go. Okay, okay, good. All right. So, so any other business? That might want that we might want to make that part of our arbitrary press release, just yeah. to remind people, yeah. just for mm -hmm. a note in there somehow, mm -hmm. and some other way to advertise. I don't know. Yeah. To get more folks to okay. apply. Um, Bob? Good thing you brought me back. <laughs> no, I'm done with anything from today. Okay. All right. Uh, to do list. We didn't really generate a lot of to do today, did we? This is fast. I. I have not identified anything that I need to do, so I'll just get myself. Nice. To think about it. All right, Sue. So. I wasn't clear who um, Marilyn or I was going to email principals about. Okay. I have something to do. Okay. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but uh, I still have to work on the. Uh, 
amending the existing permits to include climate change and other types. Todd, can you also start giving some thought about language regarding um, revising a significant, the significant tree order? Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, one thing I just wanted to mention, it's not the, uh, there's the number three series of the Plainfield Tree Talks. I should have mentioned this before. That is February 28th, 2019, uh, between 7 and 8.15 p.m. And the, the topic is climate change, extreme weather, pest disease, and street maintenance, and the role of volunteers. And the main speaker is uh, Rick Harper from UMass, if anyone is interested. It's Where's at, Plain, at Plainfield Town Hall, Plainfield, Mass. February 28th. Yes. Okay. Uh, 7 p.m. Okay, sorry. It was my pen, which is why I took the Oh, the liver video. I only have, I have just the email Marilyn, but that was last time. I also have to get to Marie Westenberg from the YMCA. Um, you know, Oh, thank you. Yeah, you'll see. You'll yep. see exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, I got to work with Alicia to finish up the um, setback plant torture, which is very nice, by the way. Oh. Which is going to look great. So she's amazing. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else to do. Other than all the other stuff you guys need. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to get back to Lily about the Monday, March 4th gas line info session as um, it's there too and I will um, when I get the uh, brochures and the poster for the uh, postcards about the Arbor Day contest I'll take it to the elementary schools and then um, I will also contact the Julie at the YMCA tomorrow regarding the planting and I'll just CC both of you so you can see what I did you might have to step in and you know it's fine. So. so I'll be continuing to prune three days a week. And it's probably not too early to start uh, thinking about planting, uh, upcoming planting, and probably or organizing yeah. recruit for that. Because it's like six weeks away. Thank you. So it's hard, hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that is hard to believe. Maybe it's not true. What? <laughs> well, it's not. Depends on the weather. Yeah, it depends on the weather. Could be sooner. But April 1st is a time when yeah. Yeah. it's a little more sensitive. Yeah, wow. All right. I'm going to uh, revise the landscape letter in the description for which she shared it. Is there more planning we have to do on the Spreadsheet right now? Not for now. I just okay. welcome other people to go over it. Okay, take a look. I think the only thing I have is to let Rich know if I'm able to go to that conference. Well, you know, if it's going to be bad weather, like as a work or something, I probably won't go to go myself. So. Oh. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, if it's bad weather, one can't go. Well, if it's like For me, it's bad weather, bobble, I can't go. If it's bobble, I won't. We have to plow out the state. Right, it makes it almost oh. impossible you would go because the weather's bad, you're not going. Yeah, yeah. In which well, case, you are going. Yeah. You have to go to your place. place. If you can yeah. go, then yeah. maybe I think that's yeah. a solution. You you go. Done. <laughs> yeah, we can start from weather conditions. Well, right. The forecast for the 28th looks pretty nice. <laughs> But the, the thing, thing is, so it's, 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 if it's raining, it doesn't affect you, but it does affect me. Yeah. 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 You guys can work it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Um, I, so I'm going to have my daughter with the brochure. I'm going to start working on a press release for our day for the early girls. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention with regard to the gas leaks is that I have a promise. We have a promising opportunity to create a, an, a, a webinar for Rick Harper's, you know, Urban Forestry Today. He has a once a month webinar that he does through the extension service. And um, so uh, Bob Ackley and I have approached him about creating a, um, a webinar about gas leaks for, for tree wardens and they get educational credits. Mm -hmm. um, so that could have a broad audience. I'm excited about that. He hasn't said yes, but he said he's, he's excited and that he'll or he's interested. I wouldn't say the word. He's interested in healing. 
Um, that's it. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.